Welcome to part four of my Dune Deep Down analysis. Welcome to my apartment in, in, in Vietnam. Just, you know, that's a very collectivist society, so people don't really like to stand out. I don't mean that in a negative way. I just mean that it is usually like that. If you look at all the apartments, I'm the only, you know, they see this as immature. I see this as art, just a cultural thing. But anyways, part four. I wanted to do a smaller video on this one because I wanted to answer questions that I've noticed that people are confused about um, regarding the movies. So when I went to the coffee house and people were asking me, what does this mean or what does this mean? Well, I'm here to give you some answers. Um, so yeah, we'll talk about maybe three things or until the memory runs out, okay? We're going to start with who the Bini Jeshurid are, alright? The Bini Jeshurid which are the women, the, you know, the, 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 the true power of the universe. And it is a cult. It is a religious order of all women that have been around for thousands of years that maintain the order of the universe um, from behind the scenes. So they are the ones that have their own agendas. They control you know, peace, order. They maintain bloodlines. And they all have their reasonings for it, which is that they're trying to, to create this perfect being that will control the universe and will, you know, almost be like the prophesized leader of the Dune universe, like John Connor, you know, in Terminator. Um, Paul Atreides, some people believe that, you know, that's what he was. Now, they are the only ones that are able to possess the power of, like, you know, the foresight, the vision. Uh, be able to use the, uh, you know, the speech, the, uh, you know, the voice. So when he's, you know, silence or sit down, you know, and it makes you black out. That's a power of the Bini Jesuit. Um, now, now, of course, Paul has that power. Uh, and he has that power on a level way above the Bini Jesuit. But just keep in mind, they have been around whispering in the ears of the Emperor, of the Atreides, of the Harkonnens, of every different house, serving their own ends. And you, you might ask, you know, where do their allegiances lie? What is their main goal? What is it that they, who, who are they loyal to? They're loyal to themselves. And there is a direct line when it comes to you know, at the end of Dune 2, the same as spoiler, it's just about, um, you know, the mother, uh, the, the mother, the grandmother, they're, they're, they're top leader, okay? So there's a division now between the Bene, Bene Gisrit. Uh I forget the title of like the top mother, uh, the grandmother, the grand visionary mother, something like that. But uh, she's like, you know, you chose the wrong side. And this was, you know, Paul's mother speaking to the one that was, you know, complicit with the emperor and the Harkonnen, Harkonnen's betraying House of Trades. And she says a very profound, you know, retort, which is, you of all people should know there are no sides. And there isn't. And that is how the Bene Gisteret operate. Um, to think of them like, you know, think of them as using you know, new type, you know, think of modern day warfare, like wars are not won by lasers and missiles and all that, wars are won, cultures are won, and civilizations are built or destroyed by winning the hearts and minds, and if you look at what's happening around the world today, there are certain fanatics, I call them, certain people with agendas that are trying to exploit this by winning the hearts and minds of people, either it be through propaganda, which the Bini Jinnasur used on the uh, Iraq, um, on the uh, free, Freeman. So Arrakis, the Freeman or the desert people, they've had the Bini Jinnasur coming to their planet for hundreds of years, you know, telling them that there's going to be this leader that comes, that frees them, that brings them to the paradise, that will, you know, uh, help them fight against their oppressors and, you know, restore their holy, holy land. And, you know, just 
you plant that seed, you give people hope. It's basic psychology that people cling to hope no matter how small it is. So, and I, I'm proof of that. There's been times when my life was at, at a sum zero, but there would be something that I would just cling to. No, no matter how little the hope, I clung to it. And yeah, that, that'll keep you going. We need that, humans need that. So the Bene Gisrit and going to the Freeman and telling them and for countless generations they've been passing on this tale of you know this this figure that would come which you know now they believe is Paul which you know this is non spoilers I'm not going to say anything so that is what the Bene Gisrit is uh, what their role is and in the first movie they even said that look we've done all we can we have prepped the freemen the people of Arrakis. Just so you know, Arrakis was once called Dune. So the movie Dune, the book Dune, is a reference to the planet Arrakis, where the spice comes from. Second, people ask me, what is spice? Spice is the ultimate currency of the Dune universe. Imagine it like gasoline that allows for inter, uh, intergalactic travel. So it's not like Star Wars where you just, you know, hyperspace or you know, go to light speed or um, hyperdrive or Star Trek where they're, you know, uh, take us to Mach 5 or to Mach 9 or, you know, sorry, it's early in the morning, I haven't had coffee yet. Spice also allows for visions and there's a whole order of people who are addicted to it who have been mutated because it gives you this power. Um, called the Spice Guild, which has not been introduced into the movies yet, but will be introduced in the third movie, part three, and Dune Messiah. So, yeah, Spice is the ultimate currency that allows for intergalactic travel. It allows for certain powers. There are people that are addicted to it. There are whole cultures and orders that use it. Spice, I mean, even the first line of the movie due to the first thing in the voice of the the Salad Arts is he who controls spice controls power the spice must flow that is pretty much the premise of what Dune is about spice so spice you know just to simplify your answer to your question is power he who controls spice controls everything and that is what creates this, you know, this holy war, this is what this uh, all comes down to, it all comes down to spice in the end. Um, and a third misconception or a third uh, thing that people um, ask me about, if I had to pick one more, and at any time this video might cut out, but if it does, don't worry, I have like 20 other deep dive analysis that I'm going to do, but um, was, um, what was it? Oh, so why is it that they use uh, swords in the future, you know, thousands and thousands of years in the future? Why is it not like Star Wars, Star Trek with phasers and all that? Well, they have that technology, okay? But they've also developed these shields that are able to stop things that move at high, you know, velocity. So things such as a laser or whatever, you know, um, high beam, plasma, things like that can be stopped by the shields that they use. Now the shields are those little blurry things that they use that they can you know, wear. Um, now knife though, knives or slow projectiles or things that move at a slower pace can actually penetrate through the shield. So that's why even though it's thousands, tens of thousands of years into the future, the art of swordsmanship is practiced, skilled, and honed. And that's why Paul, ever since he was a kid, was trained. That's why Freyd was trained to be a great fighter. Like, every house has a great fighter. Think of, like, Jon Snow, okay? Because in this universe, you, you can't just blast somebody. Now, in the desert, you can because the shields will attract the worms. That's why you sometimes you see them wear the shields, sometimes they don't. Um, if you're in the sand, you don't want to have the shield on. It will attract the worms. They're attracted to it. But yeah, the shields, that technology, it was a brilliant way of Frank Herbert to allow for swordsmanship into the future. So it's not just space and gun battles. It was such a unique approach to having actually training your whole life with weapons, knives, blades. And they use a special kind of metal, a special kind of 
uh, you know, blade that is deadly. So I hope those three things help. And yeah, stay tuned for part five, I guess, now that will be coming. This will be my fourth video I'm uploading. It will be a deep dive on the first house we are going to talk. And I'll surprise you. I'm going to go all into detail about um, the houses, their motivations, their cultures, everything about them, their people, their history. So stay tuned. I'll have that in a couple of days, maybe a week or so. Um, yeah, so... May thy knife chip and shatter.